Okay. Um, well, yeah, let's talk about, I got your uh, video messages yep. and I know we were going to talk about a couple different things today, but I thought we'd just knock this out right away. This yeah, cool. client that you're working with remotely, right? With the single leg yeah. squat on the right side issue. Yeah. And if I took the notes properly, um, when you had him do the single leg squat left to right comparison, uh, there was an issue. Uh, do you remember what, what, what it was like? Could they not lower with control? Could they not come back up both? Yeah, there, there's a, what you could call a strength endurance issue. So they can only manage a couple of reps, okay. even assisted in, in variations. The right side has always been harder for them. Um, and what tends to happen is as they lower, there's definitely like a mechanical disadvantage. They're kind of short torso, long levers. So you could say you're not necessarily built for single leg full squats, but to get to the point, um, when he lowers right side, that right knee just drops in and he ends up crumpling over. Um, ah, and gets okay. to the bottom and tries to come up, yeah. So okay. He's, and he's had a right knee injury. Um, and yeah. then ever since then, he has trouble with hip flexion and extending his knee to a terminal extension. Yes. Yeah. Um, he says if he does, if he's just seated, extends his knee and tries to contract his quad, he'll get knee pain within 20, 30 seconds. Okay. So. Okay. All right. And then uh, you were thinking about doing um, QMAMCs on him with prone hip extension, incorporating some low back extension, and keeping that knee in extension, same side knee in extension, or were you going to have the knee bent at 90? Uh, say that again. So so he's prone. Yep. Hip extension. Some yep. lumbar extension. Yep. With the knee extended or bent at 90 degrees? So they, they were going to be um, extended. So knees extended. The, okay. the first test that I wanted him to do was – Again, this is all with the help of his uh, his girlfriend. Um, it's just a prone hip extension, a kind of an upper half raise as such, um, with rotation and get her to perturb the left and right piece. Okay. Um, kind of sitting on his sitting on his legs to give him something to um, resist against. Um, and then she was gonna she was gonna apply the the torque to his sh shoulder or to yeah. his leg. To his uh, shoulder. To his shoulder, okay. Yeah, to see that, right. that kind of rotation element of the All right. body. Okay, now I got it, okay. Yeah. Um, and was she going to anchor one leg at a time or both simultaneously? Both. Okay, so, okay, yeah. so, okay, so, uh, and then 45 degrees, so I'm, uh, I'm thinking what, he's supine and he flexes his hip 45 degrees with his knee extended and she pushes him yep. down into extension. Correct, yeah. And then hip and knee flexion, supine, pushing into hip extension. So now he's fully hip flexed. The knees flex 90 degrees or so. Yeah. She's going to push him out of hip flexion. And then you wanted to think about the going to the left directionality through the transverse plane, um, seated and standing. Yeah. Okay. That was my thinking. Um, right. Did starting she, off with the seated. Did she do it yet? Uh, they haven't yet. No. Um, uh, it was get is the test. The task was to film it and upload it. He hasn't uploaded it yet. Um, okay. So Chase it up. But yeah, like, I'm just thinking. Am I? I think I'm on the right lines. And then going down in towards like prone right leg knee flexion, and then pulling into knee extension. Um, and the opposite, so knee extension into flexion. Okay, yeah. And how, yes. how long has the knee been injured? So it, it was an injury about, I think he said six to eight years ago, something around that. Wow. He, he was doing something, fell on it, and uh, remembers ever since then, he's had an issue with it. Um, it's never stopped him doing much, but every now and then it'll kind of flare up and be painful. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. And he doesn't have a torn meniscus that he knows about or a ligament no, no, injury? No. no. Other than the trying to contract it in seated knee extension, he's like, I don't get any other pad, I don't get any pain there. Okay. Um, I was just probing and asking. 
if he's ever had injuries. Okay. All right. Yeah. No other injuries to his body, low back, ankle. Um, he had a low back injury um, two years ago, which we kind of rehabbed him back from. There's no pain there anymore. Um, he had laser eye surgery about six to eight years ago, same, similar time as to the knee. Um, I think like the odd ankle sprain here and there, but nothing significant as such. Surgeries? No, other than the eye surgery, none. Okay. Uh, how, old, how old is he? He is 27. Yeah, 27. Okay, so very young still. Okay. Okay. Very low anesthetic load. Um, yeah, good. Okay, yeah, there, uh, it looks like you're on the right track for sure. So um, mm -hmm. it's just a matter. The only thing I would add is, you know, doing the QMAMC when he's prone against the leg from extension to flexion. Okay, prone. Yep, sure. That makes sense. Right. So you're checking the extension, right, of this kind of the spinal extension control um, with the hips yeah. anchored and legs anchored and then kind of switch that, you know, trunk is relatively anchored and then just have him hip extend and, and push straight, straight down. Yeah, like from the times that I've done it with him in the past, he's never really had a problem with that. What oh. he did have a problem with was like side lying, right side um, adductors. So knees together, feet apart. Um, so it'd be right hip internal rotation. Yeah. And then yeah, because... Uh, ankle down. Yeah, so the key, right, is try, trying to get the terminal knee extension back so he doesn't have any discomfort there, of course. And then I, my tendency is, again, given the information you have now, is to think about the knee to the hip relationship more than the knee to ankle right now. Yeah. And I would have him actively knee extend and then perturb as well QMAMC his hip abduction and adduction okay hip abduction hip abduction and adduction while he's while he's actively contracting terminal knee extension unless it just hurts too much and he can't do it okay so you'd have him supine hip abduction and yep. then terminal right, knee, contract yeah, terminal contract. Yeah, track terminal knee extension Perfect. and then push him into adduction, yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. And what made you, what was your thinking in terms of going, why, why did you go down that route? The knee to the hip? Yeah. yeah, because in the single leg squat, those two joints, you can't squat without those, those two joints coordinating themselves in a yeah. pretty tightly coupled way. Whatever the hip is doing, the knee's got to do something. Whatever the knee's doing, the hip's got to do something. And then there are so many, you know, there are so many muscles that act on the hip and the knee simultaneously. Um, gracilis, sartorius, rectus femoris, right? Three, the three hamstring group, uh, TFL through the tensor fascia lata. Yeah. Yeah, my, my thinking was, and again, I'm not whole, uh, stuck to this outcome, is that given the, ex the experience with um, the leftness that he's had in the past, um, is that there will be an extension and left rotation issue um, when he's prone and potentially when he's seated. Um, and that might take care of the right hamstring glue thing if it is like an access problem um which is where my thinking went from the he gets to a point and then his knee right knee just drops in it's like, okay is it getting to this and that again thinking about it now like you said the hip and knee relationship if there is something going on in, in his knee and his quad um his brain doesn't like that could be the reason as opposed to an access in his kind of glute area and low back area Potentially, yeah. So you just want to sample around there and see what see what you see. But I would suspect since it's so chronic, mm -hmm. you know, that it's, you know, a, kind of a regional problem now. 
would it help just to show you the video? Okay. Yeah, let me see the video. Um, let me share my screen. Because the, the knee to ankle in that scenario, I'm thinking about the plantar flexors, right, plyometrically. Hmm. Yeah, you have to allow me to share the screen. Oh. And you went to the the quad contraction with the hip abduction and adduction because the that gives you a good a, good insight into the the hip as a whole, that like right side hip, yeah, as opposed to like hip flexion or hip extension with quad contraction. Yes. Yeah. Did you get uh, control yet? There we go yet. Cool. So. So this is his right side. One gets it. And then you can see it just drop. Can you see that? Yes, I can see it. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. Got the third one. It's pretty, I mean, the fact that he can even do that is pretty good. Yeah. And this is the... Uh, this is the left side. Oh yeah. So you can see the the speed, the control, the fact that he's not having to lean into it. Yeah. Yeah. So different quality issue for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I would again because it's so. Thanks for sharing that. Because it's he's one freestanding deep squat. There's balance issues there as well, but. Yeah, I'd go knee to hip and then knee to ankle with some emphasis on the plantar flexion side. Okay, yeah. Ply, plyo side, so. And then and then try to connect the knee to the hip any number of configurations. Got it, yeah. And then like, in terms of like the, the plyo side from like the calf area and that like, the posterior and the anterior area, that's when you might go towards a machine like a calf raise machine because of the, the low level of leverage in there because like, yeah it's just yeah you, really can, it out. you know yeah it's pretty hard to find right on the plyo side so i usually have people standing up on a two inch block or something they go into plantar flexion up with both hmm. and then i have them maintain full plantar flexion and then shift all their weight to one leg and try to stay fully plantar flexed and see if they can even do that, you yeah. know, let alone from that position configuration, go descend down right into door, you know, dorsiflexion, but that's mm -hmm. controlled by the lengthening contraction, the plyometric of the plantar flexors. Yeah. Okay. And see if they can do that. And then I see if they can go through that sequence of up all the way on both shift weight so for him it'd be up on on both shift all the weight to the right stay fully plantar flexed can he lower down plyometrically with control and then can he turn around and come right back up and achieve the same position he started with in full plantar flexion yeah and then you can have him hold dumbbells and yeah. other stuff to increase the amount of torque if you wanted yeah. Or a kettlebell or something. One of the things I've noticed since being in the army, kind of shifting, uh, since being back in, it's just so many people are so injured. They are, people are just screwed. Yeah. Um, one of the guys I spoke to today, he's had a recurring calf issue. Um, since for the past four years, he was a physical training instructor at a training regiment. And he was doing three sessions a day, five days a week. He's having to take five days a week. And he just went on a run with one of the squads and the troops. And uh, he said his calf just popped, blew up, um, turned purple. And ever since then, but the, the physio now <laughs> is saying it's the calf and he's just massaging it and giving him 
acupuncture and things like that. And I was like, it's been four years. I was like, I highly doubt that it's the, it's the calf that's the issue anymore. By itself. Yeah. It's probably not yeah, just the calf. Anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Rubbing it, they're rubbing it, <laughs> rubbing it, and <laughs> massaging it and sticking needles in it. Yeah. And the glutes. That's the, apparently that's the physio's go to is acupuncture and the glutes. The glutes. Uh, okay. The glutes aren't firing. There's the bias, right? What a shame. It's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> so frustrating well again what it shows you well that's why we'll never be at a, at a loss for business um lee i don't know what to tell you uh yeah there, there'll be plenty of people yeah definitely will. that's for sure it's just hard to get that into mainstream thinking like what would it i, mean, I don't know if you've ever kind of thought about what it would be like if people what like physios and therapists didn't have these biases and if research had gone down this alternate route uh, with a different body view and a different philosophical view what it would have been like you'd be out of work obviously yeah you know, I'd be, yeah, I'd be, yeah i'd be working for them i guess yeah so uh, i don't i don't know yeah it's such a strange such a strange thing the uh, the th you know again the thinking there right with the rubbing and the and the acupuncture and then the glute I, like i'd like to hear the physio like defend that rationally and empirically like well why are you doing that i highly doubt that they could and they would go that's what i was taught that's what i was taught you yeah. know so ultimately that would be the problem right is the academic process does not teach critical thinking you know, does not teach scientific natural observation. It doesn't teach that stuff. No, unfortunately, which is strange. <laughs> it is very strange. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, wait a second, what are we doing here? Yeah. Well, you know, they're they're training people to be like assembly line technicians, right? Yeah. Go into work. Go into the workforce and help everyone. Yeah, you got to see some people pretty quickly. You know, you got to give them something fast, you know, and an hour. Yeah. You don't, you don't have time to think about this, you know, here we go. Yeah. I, I imagine that's due to a lack of understanding of how to onboard people and buy, get buy in, get trust. It's quick. You're in 15 minutes. Tell me about your life. Mm -hmm. Let's do a quick assessment on the area that's hurting. Forget about the rest. Yeah, local symptom must mean local problem. Yeah. Therefore, local treatment. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it just dominates the yeah. the thinking across the across the board, and, and not even really considering the chronicity mm. and its potential influence, right? On you know, regional, uh, let alone systemic control yeah. and control expression. So, yeah, my my troop boss um, who had the shoulder pain of that kind of phantom weird shoulder pain coming out of nowhere. Um, the therapist has given him acupuncture, which reduced the pain a little bit. It's now starting to come back. He's popping ibuprofen. He's like, you're going to have to come back for more acupuncture session, of course. Um, and uh, what else did he say? He said, it's posture. It's his posture that's causing it. Posture. But yeah. Posture that's causing the pain. So, well, he's, he's had this posture for years. It hasn't just appeared. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact is, he's a smoker, poor health. He's 44 years old, doesn't not taking care of himself. Three to four to five hours of sleep a night, stressed, high allostatic load, poor control all over. Um, yeah, there you go. That's probably what the case is. He needs to yeah. exercise more appropriately. Well, maybe he'll come around and let you work with him. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> he, wants, he wants the short fix. Well, that's, that's what's interesting about the, the contradiction. There. He wants the short fix, but what's the therapist telling him? We got to come back again. We got to come back again. You need acupuncture again. Right. Because I know I'd say it's, it's from a position of, because it's from a position of authority. He's the physio. I'm just some guy that's turned up. That drives tractors. Right, right. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, in terms of the the uh, assessment, 
the different assessment pieces. There's only a few really that I've found that are just 